Hi, this is Calculus Integrals, uh, and it's a continuation of Area Under uh, Curves series. And uh, what I'm going to be talking about right now is essentially why we want to make the incremental segments, uh, the increment that we do it at, uh, smaller. And you actually see, as in this graph that I've drawn here, uh, you'll find that since I've split it up just by half, you can actually see the difference. And I'm going to use left-hand corners so you can actually refer it back to the other video. But uh, left-hand corner, I'm just going to do the same thing and essentially I'm going to draw these boxes. And down and left and down and Trust me, you do get better at drawing these graphs, um, especially as you spend more and more time in the classroom. If you happen to get one of those teachers that requires to draw everything, then you'll probably spend a lot of your time doing just that. Okay, now that we're done, um, I'm just going to shade essentially all of the air. And while it still seems a lot, it's definitely less. And I don't think anyone can really argue that. Um, and you'll see that basically, while these are still air, if you compare it to the last video, it is less. And the only difference that we have, this is the same function, y equals x squared. The only difference that we have here is that um, we our delta x is actually smaller. So, is smaller. So that's two, pink, that's two points that I just wanted to make. Okay, well, th you know, I'm just going to continue on, and, uh, and I'd actually like to show you what it looks like if I do really, really a lot of, of increments, uh, really small increments. So, essentially, I'm, I'm not even going to be able to label it all, because it's going to look ridiculous. However, I'll do my best um, to replicate it. Once again, excuse my art. Um, we're going to be a little bit more freeform on this one because I don't want you guys sitting around bored. Yeah, don't hold me to court on these... Uh, on these drawings because I'll definitely lose. Okay, so essentially we know that right here and here are two important points so we can just kind of fill in between the lines here. And I'm not really going for accuracy this time, all I'm saying is that what if you had five increments between each of these or what if you had ten increments what would it look like you know you, you would just get a bunch of little tiny steps something along the lines of this let's try and do one two three four five okay so this is essentially me trying to do five increments p between each so one two three four five this is a real roundabout way of doing it but i'm just showing you that with smaller segments, and if I were to actually draw like all the lines down, just in the beginning, I'll show you what that looks like. If you look at the first half of this, you can see that not only does having a lot of increments decrease the air, and, and also increase the amount of time that you spend on the problem, but uh, it, it definitely decreases the air. 
and you can see that now if we were to add up the area of each of these rectangles, and here I'll just continue drawing it while I'm... Um, if you were to add up each of these, you can see that it becomes more and more accurate. And that's all I'm trying to show here, is that um, basically as delta x goes to zero, not it, not it, it goes to zero, it's not zero. So essentially, the other way of saying it is, as n goes to infinity, then we can get essentially what would be called, uh, considered as an integral. So I'm going to just call this, uh, tends itself to integral. And there's a mathematical way of writing this out. Um, essentially, the series form of writing out an integral is as n goes to infinity and then essentially f x1 delta x plus and I'm I'm sorry this is just going to continue on but here I'll, I'll do another line down here uh, that will be f x2 delta x plus f x 3 delta x and what is that really what, what is this really saying this is area of the first triangle you know area of the second or not triangle sorry area of the first rectangle area of the second rectangle area of the third rectangle let me just go dot 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 f of x to the n delta x and that just says if you have a hundred increments, if you have a hundred segments, then that would be fx to the hundredth, and that just means the hundredth one. That's all that's saying. So basically, you know, this kind of concept sets the foundation down for finite integration, and uh, and, and it actually tends itself to infinite integration. But uh, basic thing, finite integration, okay? Um, I just wanted to set this up. Finite integration is between a set point. So, in this case, like this. This is a finite integration. This is between between 0 and 1. And that's the only area that we're talking about. Finite integration. You guessed it. What is infinite? I'm sure you know. Infinite integration talks about what this function is doing. Uh, like, what's the area of this function if it were to continue forever, both negative and positive infinity? So, um, usually these are expressed in in functions, but you you never know. Sometimes you can find it. I've I've seen ones that actually go into just a constant. So, anyway. Um, and this one, I'm just going to point out, um, goes from negative infinity to infinity. And actually, it, whenever you write that, you should just have it in parentheses. Uh, so anyway, we're just going to stop there. And I hope you guys continue on to the next uh, video. What we're going to talk about is definite integrals. So you have a good one.